I said yes in a heartbeat uh, to run with this man is because he embodies American strength. And I know that he will provide that kind of broad-shouldered American strength on the global stage as well. I have seen more people that, frankly, uh, did not like me so much, and now they're saying, what a great pick. You see the kind of reaction. He, he has helped bring the party together. Republicans are gathered in Cleveland this week determined to prove the naysayers wrong. Those on the convention floor, those who have pledged their soul to moving America more to the right, they have before them a Herculean task of reining in not only those undecided voters across America, but plenty of people in their own party and finding the numbers and passion to defeat Hillary Clinton in November. But it is that soul that has more than a few conservatives worried. Those who have been lifelong Republicans are wondering out loud if Republicans are in the process of losing their way in historic fashion perhaps even losing their soul along the way. While well, there are millions who fire back, but this is what has to be done to change America for the better. There is no unity here. This is perhaps what Donald Trump needs to focus on more closely this week than ever before, or face what could be a disaster of epic proportions. Welcome back to Paraprofessionals. That will add nuance to our time together and will be available to answer your phone calls as well at 1-877-NEWSMAX. He is the veteran economist, syndicated columnist, read on the electronic pages at Newsmax.com, professor of business at the University of Maryland, Peter Morisi, joined by the big data and counterterrorism strategist, proud to be a conservative Muslim pundit, actively working to build interfaith dialogue and talk politics, Oz Sultan. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Let's get to work. Peter, in the New York Times yesterday, in the opinion pages from Peter Wenner, who's been involved in several Republican administrations and is a dyed-in-the-wool Republican. Can we find our way back to Lincoln is the title of the article. And he talks here about the end of the soul and the losing of the soul by Republican voters, where he says the party guests took over the party. We are struggling for the nomination, and the struggle for the soul of the party is not here. This is a difficult moment for the Republicans. Do you and should people who are Republicans fear the loss of their soul? Did he get it right? No, there's two problems here. One is that Trump will not likely win, and the establishment will get the party back. But even if he won, he's probably moving the party in a direction he need, needs to move it in order for it to become relevant in this century. You have to remember that in the days of Barry Goldwater, the kind of rock group conservatism that people consider to be fundamentalism today was viewed with anathema. Uh, Goldwater moved the party to a more conservative position away from the Dewey and Rockefeller Republicans who were much more moderate. And in the end, it resulted in the election and reforms of Ronald Reagan. The Democrats have been through similar transformations in the past. Williams, Jennings, Bryan's, uh, you know, campaign on behalf of uh, uh, Southern farmers was the last gasp of a Democratic Party that was fundamentally based in the South. After that, after his three losses, they decided to become the Unionist Party of the North, the industrial workers, the Catholics. So, Oz, is that what people are missing here? Because in his column, Winner says the party many of us will fight for is a conservative one that appeals to rather than alienates non-whites that doesn't view decency as a sign of weakness or confuse bullying and bluster with strength. So, in essence, is that what's going on here is we're looking more ahead to 2020? And I'll tell you, that's difficult, Oz. Because remember, there's millions of people who say that Donald Trump is the future, and if we don't get him right now, this country will never recover from the alternative of Hillary Clinton, no matter what you think the Republicans are going to be in four and eight years. That's fair. Um, I'll give you two points. You know, I was on Newsmax previously with Scott Miller, and two of the things that we talked about were the fact that Trump coming in has basically given the neocons and the Tea Party their you know, their, their notice, right? And so if you look at the Republican Party as it's evolving today, 84% uh, or more of actually who comprises the Trump campaign literally looks like the tapestry of America. Um, in addition to that, you know, I've worked in New York City with uh, the National Latino Republican Organization. We were talking about putting together a Latino uh, Muslim GOP coalition in tandem with City GOP here in, in New York. You know, we're, we're kind of looking to see what comes out of the RNC inside of this week uh, as we start, start talking about not just shaping local policy, but uh, as far as, you know, policy will move future forward. Now, these folks that you're talking about, it's, 
it's all of America moving in a different direction than I think people are accustomed to. This is a battle that has been fought on social media. Hillary has lost spending twenty two million dollars initially on attack ads to instagram posts okay she lost with a million dollars that was spent specifically on going into 4chan and 8chan to troll trump alt writers that didn't work either the democrats aren't necessarily getting where the soul of america is but, but let me stop you there if like i can for just a second oz because and, and i want to hold this mm -hmm. short here because there are those people who would say, Oz, what you're saying may be real nice here, but you're missing the point. If we don't get Trump in office right now, we're facing four and eight years of Hillary Clinton. This country's, this is what many people believe, is going to be in a disastrous state by the time we get there. And no matter what you change the Republicans to, it won't do any good. How do you answer those people real quickly, Oz? I think that we'll actually get Trump in office. And, you know, as Harmy Carr Dillon, who's the head of the Rules Committee there and a California delegate, said, I think we can work with him, right? Because, and, and she's a Sikh uh, Indian American. Um, you know, she's someone who, who represents this minority population that you're talking about. I think that he can get enough broad-based support. I think the next couple months are going to play very interestingly. I think talking about um, you know where he sits with Pence and how Pence is going to factor into this is also going to be very right. interesting. But I think America is tired. Okay, America is tired of eight years of non-progress. They're tired of the fact that the deficit has increased and they're looking for an opportunity. And if it's not someone who's going to bring jobs, if it's not someone who's going to bring lower taxes, it's not really an opportunity for them. And okay. that's where I think Trump has the advantage. Let me get to this then. Peter, let me switch real quick to what happened today then when we're talking about the fabric of what the Republican Party is. The never Trump forces, the delegate changing forces basically lost today. As a matter of fact, Donald Trump Jr. tweeted to Utah Senator Mike Lee and former Virginia AG uh, Ken Cuccinelli, your careers are finished. Two people who are all part of the, the Never Trump movement. But does this show us now that the way this was put down very quickly and coldly and done, that this is the right thing and that these people need to go away and get behind Trump? Or do you think we're going to see even more of this as the week goes on? No, I think that we'll see some more of it, but it won't be effective. I don't believe that this was done for, for reasons of great vision about the party, but just to avoid uh, mayhem on the, on, on the floor because we wouldn't have a traditional brokered convention with delegates that were reasonably controlled by politicians. Rather, we'd have chaos. And the Republican national chairman saw that, so he put it down. But with regard to Trump winning, you know, right now, his polling with Hispanics is in the teens. It's around 17, 16, 18 percent. Romney captured, you know, a lot more than that, but it wasn't enough. If you can't figure out a way to get from him from 18% to 38%, there's no way on God's green earth he's going to win Florida, Virginia, and Colorado together and win this election. He's going to lose it very much the way Romney did because of his comments about deporting Hispanics, but he's going to lose it much worse because his rhetoric was much harsher. And also, gender does play in favor of Hillary, picking her up a few points. Get a quick opinion here. Kevin is in Arizona right now, joining us at one eight seven seven Newsmax. Kevin, you say you'll support Trump. You say he's not the best option from the seventeen candidates who ran for the Republican nomination. But you just said it. He will become the Republican nominee. So don't you have to get behind him or face a future of Hillary Clinton? Well, yes, uh, because I'm a Republican, I have to support the nominee. I don't have to. Agree, number one, that he's the best person because I don't think he is. Number two, what bothers me about it is he doesn't say he doesn't say much about the Constitution and how it will apply to his position as the president and how it applies to us as a nation. So I have some concerns, some really really serious concerns. All right. But that being said, there's no alternative for me. There you go. Thank you very much for the call, Ernie's in Jackson. Michigan. Ernie, you think Donald Trump is more qualified than Hillary. Give me 30 seconds. Why? Be succinct and to the point. Why and how? He's a, he's a businessman. He's been on top of all this, uh, everything that's been happening. I'm going to play devil's world. advocate, Ernie. He knows nothing about government, though. What makes him then more qualified? <laughs> he, run a, he run a business uh, like, a, like a machine. I mean, I know damn well that he can uh, handle the United States. 
All right, let me ask this then of Peter Marisi. I only got a short time left. We're going to take a break. Both of you gentlemen are going to come back with us after the break. But Peter, 30 seconds. People say that Donald Trump has run a company. You're involved in economics. You follow that as a professor. So is it possible, and in your opinion, to take that economic knowledge and move it over to running a government? 30 seconds. George Bush, George W. Bush was the first MBA to hold the presidency. He was a terrible president. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm always amused by... CEOs of moderate-sized companies who call me up and say, well, you know, I'm 53 years old and I'm kind of tired of being a CEO. I'd like to come down to Washington and do what you do, that is, appear on TV and write op-eds. Can you show me how to do that? <laughs> I always respond to that, sir, I'd be just as happy as, a, as, as can be to show you that if you'll let me run your company for three years. That, and they go aghast. Yes. And, and, they and go there yes. you go. That, that is, and, and that's that, the end of that conversation. That comes from an economist, ladies and gentlemen. Peter Marisi, Oz Sultan, stand by. We're coming right back on The Hard Line. More of your phone calls at 1-877-NEWSMAX. More of our tour across the political landscape with counterterrorism analyst Oz Sultan and syndicated columnist Peter Morisi. Oz, coming to you next year as we talk a little politics about what has gone on today and yesterday. Uh, Donald Trump had his interview at 60 Minutes yesterday. According to the Washington Post, it was eye-opening. Oh, also, Mike Pence was there, in case anybody might have missed it. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting the way everything pretty much played out and how it played out. Leslie Stahl trying to ask if Mike Pence had the ability to tell Donald Trump when he's wrong, began asking about Trump's comments about John McCain. Donald Trump would not let Mike Pence answer. Here's the exchange. Do you think John McCain is not a hero because he was captured? I have a great deal of respect uh, for John McCain. Do you and, think uh, he went too far? I, I, you could say yes. I, I, that's okay. I, On that I, one, you could say yes. I mean, you know, it's fine. Hey, look, I like John McCain. But we have to take care of others. No, but I want to know if okay, Mr. Pence saying, would go in and say to you, that many people what are you upset? What interesting here because they're agreeing to disagree more or less and at many times it looked as if Donald Trump was running the conversation and he would not let Mike Pence answer. Oz, what should that say to Republicans who are looking for that good ticket and many of them see Mike Pence as the right guy who knows the inside of Washington but when the supposed president of the United States won't let you answer, what should that tell you? I think there's, there's a lot of uh, team building that has to happen now. You know, Pence came into the game uh, last week, and I think most of New York was outraged that he ate at Chili's. Mike, if you do make it to New York, <laughs> we're happy to take you somewhere nicer. Um, but I will say, I will say this: that they're going to need to work on not just their their rapport, but they're going to need to work on policy together as well. Uh, I think Trump is kind of coming into his own, you know, we've seen him sort of this Wild West shooting from the hip type character for the past couple of months, but he's starting to emulate that presidential authority that we want. So I think the, the opportunity is there, I just think it's probably going to be a short period of time before we see that emerging. What do you think, Peter? Let's face it, Donald Trump has done very well getting to this point right now why should and it's that old question that we continue to ask peter why should donald trump change the way he does things now because it's worked so well well it's because eight out of ten republicans are white and so the primary campaign that he ran worked very well and among white voters republicans do very well with poorly educated people they do terribly these days with well-educated people and he's going to have to move to the middle if he wants to basically close the gap that Hillary Clinton has opened up. That's why he has to change. The next thing I don't really find the running mate disagreements very particularly important. I mean, think about some of the things social conservatives worry about. Abortion, gay rights, and so forth. Do you remember when Reagan stacked the court with conservatives and the conservatives came back with abortion on Roe versus Wade? This is a matter of settled law. Those things aren't getting reversed, and that's it. That's the end of it. So it doesn't matter whether, you know, Billy Graham was the candidate for president of the United States. Those aren't issues that are going to move. My feeling is that Pence will be useful in another more fundamental way. Governors really understand the machinations of the entitlements programs. In order for Trump to do some of the things he wants to jumpstart the economy, He's going to have to trim in an artful and skillful way what he spends on entitlements. He hasn't said that so far. He hasn't said that he wants to do that. He said the reverse. But he's going to have to do that. Somebody like Pence will be very helpful in showing him the way. 
Again, okay, Peter, let me stop you there if I can. Hold on. Republicans are interested in ideological <laughs> purity. And Leslie Stahl, frankly, is a good liberal journalist at CBS, hell-bent on embarrassing. <laughs> there you go. All right. That was the good close to that. You started talking about the economy, so let me hit you on this. The White House has recently predicted that the federal government's budget deficit for the current fiscal year will hit $600 billion. That's an increase of $162 billion over last year and a bit of a sour note on President Obama's watch here. All right, Peter, forget all this right now. Let's put this aside. Okay, we know it is. The deficit has gotten so much bigger. Peter, what is the very first thing that Donald Trump should do if and when he gets into office to turn this around? Well, we have to have entitlements reform. I got bad news for people my age. They have to work till 70. Uh, we just have to raise the Social Security retirement age, but we also have to start to trim the entitlements that have been built out that now discourage people from getting jobs. The marginal tax bracket in a two-adult two family uh, where one works and they get a lot of government benefits, if the other goes back to work, can be 40, 50, 60 percent. Uh, we have to change that. And I think Pence will be useful in doing that. If you do those things, you can get the deficit under control. However, we probably need to rebuild our Navy and I'd like to know who's going to pay for that, because if, unless we want to give China the South China Sea, we're going to need a couple of more carrier groups. All right, a couple of minutes we got left here. Oz, I'm going to come to you with some numbers now and put it in perspective of some foreign policy. New polls over the weekend. Incredible favorability towards Hillary Clinton. Head to head against Donald Trump. She has a four, five, or seven point lead. And of course, is depending on the poll that you look at CNN, ABC, NBC News. The Washington Post asked if a candidate was qualified to be president. Hillary got a favorable 59-39 response. Americans feel that Trump doesn't meet the standards to be president. 60-37 against. All right, Oz, I take all those numbers and I come to you now in a foreign policy idea here. Everything that has happened in Turkey in the last few days with Erdogan, ISIS, the coup that has failed. When it comes down to the next president, how critical is it that the next POTUS gets involved in Turkey, gets involved in these governments, and make sure that they toe the line and do what they have said they will do with regard to the fight against ISIS and terror. I think it's fantastically important. And I think that there's a, a second issue that's not being looked at here, and this is the issue of Russia. Russia had a plane that was shot down by Erdogan a couple of weeks ago. Erdogan has strongly postured that he could take Russia out inside of a week. And as we look at Oskarth and what happened it, with Oskarth as the general, and we look at what happened inside of this coup, and the fact that he has to execute some sort of a crackdown to maintain the democracy that they have in place, we're going to need a strong leader that can work with Turkey to not just, one, put a ground invasion in place that will stop ISIS, but two, demonstrate some sort of a martial plan for that region that is going to allow us to not just mop up, but to maintain the hegemony that we have. Hillary has already stated, not just in emails, but in the Gucci fire leak, that she is very much in favor of a Sunni Shia war that would basically pit Iran and Saudi Arabia against each other. That is a war the American people cannot afford. That is a war that the world can't afford. And when we've got things positioned right now in the South China Seas that we are already moving our eastern carrier groups across, We've got a very difficult landscape ahead. Vladimir Putin is respected, or sorry, v Donald Trump is respected by Vladimir Putin. Hillary Clinton is not. And if you look at the international stage today, Hillary Clinton just does not have the answers. She didn't necessarily perform at the JV role as Secretary of State. Why would you want to give her the varsity? I'm role? going to stop you right there for a second because you hit a great question. 20 seconds to you then, Peter, on this. Are the Democrats and followers of Hillary Clinton fooling themselves when they say, well, she was Secretary of State, so she'd be the obvious one to go ahead and deal with all this, and she'd do it well? China building islands in the South China Sea, Russia in the Crimea, and in Syria. ISIS spreading from a small group in Iraq all the way across Africa. Those are foreign policy successes, not to mention Benghazi, and Islamic terrorists walking down the streets of San Bernardino gunning down Americans. She sure has a track record. It's terrible. <laughs> look at what it's they've done in the past and terrible. use that to look at your future going ahead. Great ideal. Peter Marisi, Oz Sultan, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you both on the show. We'll talk to you again. Hey, don't forget, our big coverage of the RNC kicks in Wednesday and Thursday night. Rock on, true believers. Good night and good luck. <laughs>